Next, let's take a look at the distinct keyword. We use the distinct keyword alongside the select statement to retrieve or to return only distinct values. Uh, and by distinct values, I mean different values. I will switch over to SQL Server to show you what I mean. So as usual, I'll make a comment here and we'll just call this the distinct, call it, we could call it distinct statement. And let's print out our table. Okay. In order to understand what distinct, what a distinct value is or a distinct record, uh, let's look at our gender column. In our gender column, we can see that we have male and female, and, and it does repeat itself a, a few times because right now within this gender table, the if you scroll down, we can see that we only have two different types of gender, which is male and female. So if we want to retrieve the distinct um, values or the distinct records within the gender column, we would have two because we have two separate or two different types of gender, which is male and female. When we look at the reviews column, it might be possible to have a record that has the same, like multiple record that has the same reviews, but I don't believe so. So in this in this column, there's really no, like each of the, each reviews, uh, they're all different. So they're all unique and they're all different. If we, the same thing with available copies and pages, but if we look at our genre, we also can see that we have, we have memoir, we have fiction, we have self-help, we have thriller, and those genres do repeat itself, but we do have separate types of genres. So we have distinct genres within the genre column. The year release, we also have some years that books, we have, um, some years in which we had multiple books released within those years. So we could say, for instance, that 2005, we have um, The Shadow of the Wind and Blowfly. Blowfly, they were both released in 2005. So 2005 will be a distinct year. It will be, you know, it will be a distinct record. Um, another way, another column we could see distinct is if we look at our author's last name. So we have Grant Cadon, who released, we have two books belonging to Grant Cadon. So we have the 10X rule, as well as be obsessed to be average. So if we were to look at uh, the distinct values within our auto last name, Grant Cadon will be distinct, even though it, uh, his name shows up twice, we would have one distinct value for that. Um, to put this into uh, uh, more visual, and this is the way, so we have our select, and to request a distinct value, all we need to do is just add a distinct keyword next to select. So what do we, and, and then we'll select distinct, and for now, let's just say we, let's take a look at the gender column. So I'll select distinct, and then we choose our column, gender from books. So when we run this, it's going to give us male and female because those are the two distinct values within that column. Those are the two different values within that column. Let's take a look at our genre. Select distinct genre from books. So when we run this, we can see that we have, well, I won't count, well, we have six because it's showing up. So we have six, uh, I would say we have five because null is not, you know, it's not a genre. So we have five distinct genres within our genre column. So we have fiction, we have memoir, novel, self-help, and thriller. What about our last name column? So select distinct, and we want auto last name from books. So let's run this. So now we, we have 17 and, and we know, you know, based on the records we've, we've entered and if we select all from our books, we know that we have 21 records, but then when we select distinct, 
it's showing that we have 17 records and that's because now Cadon is not showing up twice anymore and if we look at Johnson we also have two last name that's Johnson so that's also now it's showing as one and I believe we have Sue um, let's see yeah, we have Watson. So Watson Sue, we also have two books belonging, belonging to Watson and now it's showing up as one. So what this is showing us a distinct last name. Now we have to be careful when we look at last name because when we look at our table and I'm just going to run that. If we look at Johnson, we have, uh, we have John, Catherine Johnson and we have Adam Johnson. But when we use this select distinct um, statement, it's assuming that this Johnson is one person. So by just select, when we do a select distinct and just, you know, just select just the last name, we may be, we, we may be, you know, retrieving the wrong record. Cause like I said, now it's assuming that Johnson is a distinct value. So what we can do is we can actually set, do a select distinct with multiple columns. So we can say select distinct and what we want is auto first name and then auto last name. from books and let's just go with that for now and when we run this so now what we see is if we look at Johnson we have Catherine Johnson and we have Adam Johnson so what's it, what SQL is doing now is it's selecting the distinct value of both auto first name and auto last name so it's going to go from each role is auto first name and auto last name delinked, um, distinct? Yes, it's going to select that. And then it's going to move to the next query. Is auto first name and auto last name you know, distinct? Yes, and that's what's doing this. And now, um, as opposed to when we just did the select distinct on the last name, that it just goes and says, is Johnson dis distinct? And find uh, Johnson and Johnson is distinct. And then it prints that out. But now it's combining both of the columns to say, the first name and the last name has to be distinct for me to return that record. And and that's why even though Grant Cadon has multiple books, it's only showing it once because we only want distinct value, the distinct authors in our data in our table. And if we look at Sue Watson, that also has two books. Uh, Sue Watson, A Little Lie, and the Empty Nest, it also returns that name once because we want just the distinct values of our author's first name and the author's last name. And now that we have our results set, we can of course order this by, you know, let's let's copy the same query. And what's let's say we want to we want to order by the author's last name. So we can just type order by author's last name all right and when we run this we have the same result but now it's ordered by author's last name in ascending order and if we want to order it in descending order we just need to put in the, the descending keyword and all we need to do is after the the column we just write the sc and that will order our results in the sending order.